Cells require oxygen and nutrients, for example, glucose, uh, to respire or to actually do various things to help our body function. And you will know that our cells will get these oxygen and nutrients from the blood, which is transported around the body. And you would know as well, the blood is transported in the circulatory system inside the arteries, veins, and capillaries. In that sense, we can tell that the cells are not immersed or soaked in blood. So how do we actually get these nutrients from the blood then if we are sort of separated? And that's where tissue fluid comes into play. It's Tissue fluid is basically the liquid that the cells are soaked in that facilitate that diffusion of substances between the blood and the cells. You need to know what it is, which we basically mentioned, and also how we can actually make tissue fluid and how it actually facilitates diffusion of these different substances. So we say that tissue fluid formation is dependent on the filtration pressure, which is determined by which is determined by oncotic pressure and hydrostatic pressure. So oncotic pressure is basically the tendency of water to move into the blood by osmosis. As you will know, in the blood, there will be different things like rubber cells, white blood cells, platelets, and plasma. And inside the plasma, there are plasma proteins, which actually cause uh, leads to the existence of oncotic pressure. They lower the water potential in the blood, causing water to want to move in certain directions. So it actually generates what we call an osmotic effect, which is the effect of osmosis. Do not mix up osmotic effect with oncotic pressure, and they are two different things. Because these plasma proteins are so big, they never leave the bloodstream, so therefore the oncotic pressure will always stay the same, and it's measured to be at minus 3.3 kilopascal. If it's a minus pressure, so minus kilopascal, it refers to the substances wanting to move into the blood. So if it's a positive kilopascal, positive pressure, it means that substances are moving out of the blood, and that will be the case in the hydrostatic pressure basically blood pressure and because it's generated by uh, the heart contraction changes according to location this tissue fluid is formed in the capillary so we can consider that there's the arterial end where the blood enters and then there's the uh, venous end which is where the blood is leaving capillaries leaving the uh, organ to go back into the veins to go back to the heart this is plus 4.6 kilopascal and same thing here, which is plus 2.3 kilopascal. And it's important to know these numbers because then you can use, pair these two numbers at different parts of the capillary to determine how the tissue fluid is formed and how, whether they're going in or out of the blood. So here is a sort of uh, simulation of the capillary. So this bit here is the capillary and the tissue fluid and the cells are just kind of surrounding it. So this is where the blood comes in from the arteries uh, and this is the direction of the, uh, of the blood. Within the capillary, we say that there's oncotic pressure, which is always minus 3.3 kilopascal, and then the hydrostatic pressure changes in these two bits. And here we'll be comparing the two to kind of figure out what's going on. So first of all, in the uh, arterial end, there is high blood pressure coming in. We say the hydrostatic pressure is us 4.6 kilopascal. And as I mentioned before, if it's positive, it means the substances are trying to move out of the blood. And then, at the same time, we have to consider the cotic pressure, which is always minus 3.3, and they're trying to move in. And if you compare the two, 0.6 hydrostatic pressure uh, plus minus 3.3, you will get an overall filtration pressure, positive 1.3 kilo. Scale. And because we mentioned before again and again, positive meaning it's trying to leave the blood, so therefore the overall net movement is out. So the plasma containing all the uh, oxygen or glucose will leave the blood capillaries, forming tissue fluid, allowing the nutrients to actually diffuse into the cells. So the cells actually get the stuff that they need. And then the blood continues to travel along. So we say that there's no net movement here. So it's equalized filtration pressure here. Then finally, we get to the venous end. 
Same thing, we're gonna compare the two. Here we've got hydrostatic pressure to be at 2.3 kilopascal. So again, it's moving out. Oncotic pressure stays the same. But if you compare the two this time, if you do the calculation to find out the overall filtration pressure, this time it is at minus one kilopascal. And because it's minus, it means that there is net fluid in. So what happens will be that after the cells getting all these nutrients and oxygen, it will undergo respiration and perhaps produce substances like carbon dioxide or urea uh, and perhaps uh, other stuff as well. And they will go into the tissue fluid and this pressure here will allow the tissue fluid to bring the carbon dioxide in urea back into the blood to be transported away because of the negative pressure here. And there you have it. This is basically how tissue fluid is formed. So just a very quick recap. Here, high blood pressure, therefore high hydrostatic pressure. Uh, compared to the oncotic pressure, we get a positive pressure overall. So therefore, the fluid is moving out. And here, after a while, we have lost that high blood pressure. And so we've got a lower hydrostatic pressure here. Compared to the oncotic pressure, got a negative filtration pressure here so therefore the net fluid will be moving back in to so bring all the waste products back into the blood in order for them to be transported away the heart and get rid of in various organs and so there you have it you've got tissue fluid which is made depending on on contact pressure and hydrostatic pressure and we just need to compare the two in order to find out how it's made here and how the fluid goes back in here to be transported away in the blood